All right, everybody, welcome back. Thank you for watching. I'm warning y'all ahead of time. It rained for the last three or four days and the bugs are absolutely insane out here right now. So you're gonna see me doing a lot of this crap because they're attacking me from all angles. But today we're gonna put an old myth to the test and this is an experiment that I'm really curious about. So today's video is how bulletproof is a hand grenade. Now I scoured the internet trying to find the most legitimate real grenades that I could. There's a lot of replicas and a lot of fakes out there, but I think I found several legitimate old emptied out hand grenades. So we actually have a couple different kinds here. On the left, we have the Mark II pineapple grenade because of its obvious pineapple shape. And then next to that, we have the M26, also known as the lemon grenade because you guessed it, it's shaped like a lemon. Now these are obviously from different eras. The Mark II pineapple grenade was late World War I into World War II, I believe. And the M26 lemon grenade was after that, so like Korea and Vietnam, but both of these grenades have definitely seen a lot of action. So the pineapple grenade was apparently designed to help assist in fragmentation, and that's why it has all these little cuts and grooves in it, was to help it break apart more uniformly. Um, apparently it didn't work as well as they had hoped it would, but that was the design behind the pineapple grenade, and then the lemon grenade apparently has like notches or grooves cut out on the inside, and that's what helps this one fragment. From what I read, I believe the lemon grenade was a little bit more effective. So the myth that we're putting to the test today and I'm sure you guys have all heard this one as well, is that back in the day during World War I or World War II, when they were in the trenches fighting super close quarters, uh, soldiers would basically skeet shoot incoming hand grenades with their shotguns and prevent them from landing. And you know, that's one of the ways that they dealt with incoming grenades. Now that is some high stakes clay shooting right there. So we're gonna put that to the test, but first I wanna start small, work our way up through different calibers and see how bulletproof a hand grenade really is. Let's do it. By the way, I've seen a couple comments asking why I haven't been wearing my electronic earplugs. Basically, I just haven't got new batteries for them. That's all it is. But first up, we're gonna start with the 22 long rifle out of the Ruger 1022. So I got one pineapple grenade and one lemon grenade set up there, and we're gonna shoot each of these at the same time with different calibers and maybe see if one is stronger than the other and how bulletproof these things are. Check them out. Every time I make one of these videos, my biggest fear is that the very first gun we shoot will go straight through it and then we have no video. But here they are on the ground right next to each other. So let's go ahead and set them up here and take a look at them. All right, so that 22 barely did anything to both of these. You can see where it hit on our pineapple grenade right there in between those grooves. And then on this one right there above that halfway point. And again, basically just scraps the surface. So let's step it up. All right, we moved up a little bit for this one because that's a really small target to hit with the pistol. But next up we have the nine millimeter full metal jacket out of the SIG P365XL. <laughs> well, I shot the pineapple grenade and it looks like the shrapnel blew the other one off the railroad tie. Let's try it again. So the 22 just kind of dumped them onto the ground and you can see how much further that nine millimeter through these backs. So here is our pineapple grenade. <laughs> So that one definitely went all the way through that one side. And our other one, same exact thing. Wow. Actually, there's a bullet in there. There it is. So there is our nine millimeter bullet <laughs> that I just dumped out of that. Man, that is a clean hole straight into that thing, but it did not come out the other side. Let's see if this one has an exit hole. Okay, so it doesn't have an exit hole, but you can see it split that thing all the way around, almost split it in half. But again, no exit hole. Let's see if we can get through both sides. Well, since these are some old school grenades, I went ahead and broke out the old school guns. This is a Mosin Nagant. And yes, that is a bayonet on the end of it. And this one is chambered in 7.62 by 54R. This is a powerful little sucker. 
out of a very cool gun. So let's see what it does to that grenade. I predict it'll blow straight through it, probably break it in half, if not break it apart into several pieces. You gotta shoot with the bayonet deployed, it only makes sense. Good grief. <laughs> now that was a fireball. <laughs> All right, well, here's the majority of it, and you can see how it just easily blew that thing apart. We all knew it would. I actually can't find the other half with the pin and everything in it, but of course, that's a result we all expected, but I just had to shoot it with that gun. Let's try the shotgun. All right, guys, so I went ahead and got a brand new grenade, so you can see there are no marks, no bullet holes. This is a fresh pineapple grenade, and now we're gonna go ahead and put this shotgun theory to the test. So we're probably gonna start with bird shot, number eight shot or something like that, and then go up from there and see how likely it is that guys actually skeet shooted these things with their shotguns. So from everything that I've read, it looks like soldiers mainly used double lot buckshot back in the day, which would be possible to shoot something out of the air. There's guys that shoot stuff out of the air with 22. So it is possible, uh, but it would be incredibly difficult compared to something like this number eight shot or another bird shot so we're gonna start with this and work our way up from here and we're back probably 10 15 yards I wanted to be kind of far back because if you're shooting stuff out of the air you're obviously not gonna be five feet away so we're back probably 15 yards and we'll see what this number eight shot does <laughs> I don't know if there's anything left <laughs> Boy, I complain a lot when I'm out here in the winter and I'm just wishing for summer to get here, but I forget how sticky it is out here in the woods. Sweat and bugs are not a good combination. So here is our pineapple grenade. We already got bugs crawling on it. And it actually looks like nothing went through. You can see all those little marks where that bird shot hit it. This side's completely clean, obviously. Um, but that side took all of that bird shot and you can see it's literally covering the entire grenade but nothing went through. So I just saw it kind of disappear when I shot and I just assumed that it exploded into a hundred different pieces, but it looks like it just blew it off the railroad tie and it completely stayed intact. Number four buckshot. I believe there's like 20 pellets in here. This would be much easier to hit a flying target than double lot buckshot. But if this goes through, then we know double lot buck would easily go through. So number four buckshot. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's a big power difference. All right, so that one <laughs> completely bent our handle, almost upright, but it doesn't look like anything went all the way through. You can see we got a bunch of marks up there on the top of the grenade, some right here, definitely some dents, some dents down here in the middle as well. But even on the handle that got really damaged, it doesn't look like anything actually went through. It just bent the crap out of it. So I firmly believe that if we were at point blank range, some of those would have probably went through, but since we're back so far, it looks like it handled it pretty well. Let's try the double op buck. One more theory to consider is that even if the shotgun load just redirected an incoming grenade, it would still be an effective defense. It doesn't necessarily have to penetrate all the way through or completely explode it. So keep that in mind. Next up, we have some nine pellet double ot buckshot. Let's see what this does. I predict it's gonna go through. <laughs> well, it launched it back about 10 feet. Let's check it out. Very interesting. So you can see that it definitely <laughs> blew the top completely off, which I guess could be an effective defense against one of these things, but there are no bullet holes in the side of it. So it's possible that I could have shot too high and missed the actual you know, body of the grenade. Um, I think I do see some new marks on here, but it's kind of hard to tell. Let's shoot it one more time. And you can see how far it's launching that thing every time I shoot it. So at the very least, it would definitely redirect an incoming grenade. So next up, we have another double lot buck shot, but this is actually a three inch double lot buck. I believe it's 12 pellets. We're gonna try to aim a little bit lower with this one, see if we can get more pellets on that grenade. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that recoil. Holy crap. 
All right, y'all, well, this is all the evidence we need right here. <laughs> Definitely blew her apart that time. You can actually see that little stem in there. I guess that's part of the fuse that would set these things off. Um, but yeah, that's probably the top third of it right there. We got another piece way over here. This looks like the bottom of it. Just blew it into multiple pieces. I can't really find too many more of them. Here's another little piece right there. Again, that's three pieces that we got. We're still missing quite a bit of it, but yeah. Uh, double up buckshot will definitely explode a hand grenade. <laughs> I think we answered that question. So I obviously didn't expect these things to be very bulletproof. They're designed to fragment. So I kind of assumed that they'd be pretty easy to get through, but it's just an experiment that I've always wanted to do. And I thought you guys would probably enjoy watching it. So turns out double lot buckshot is definitely powerful enough to explode a hand grenade. And we found that out today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. As always hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.